Proverbs 1 and verses 1 through 6. Proverbs 1 verses 1 through 6. Our introduction, a proverb is a short sentence often repeated. Proverb is a short sentence that's often repeated and expressing a well-known truth, something that you know is true. It expresses a well-known truth or a common fact. Uh, would we mute our mics, please? Express a well-known truth or a common fact discovered by experience or observation. A proverb. Express a truth or a well-known fact that has been discovered by experience or observation. If the New Testament is the rule of faith, the book of Proverbs may be considered as a valuable rule of conduct. And so if you're looking uh, trying to discover how to live a successful life. Proverbs is a very interesting book to uh, read and to meditate on. If the New Testament is the rule of faith, then Proverbs can be considered as the rule of conduct. If the world were governed by the whole wisdom of this single book, it would be a new earth dwelling in righteousness. A new earth dwelling in righteousness. Verse number one. Uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. King of Israel. Now, here is Solomon's resume. Here, here's his resume. His resume is found in First Kings, chapter four, and verses twenty-nine through thirty-three. This is the NIV, NIV version. This is Solomon's resume. If you were to go to Solomon's class today, this is his resume for teaching. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight, great understanding, and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sands of the seashore. You, you, you would never be able to count the sands on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including these people. I'll give you Ethan and uh, Ezra Height. He was wiser than than. Uh, Heman and Kakol and Dada and the sons of Maol. And his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. So we don't have all of the Proverbs that Solomon wrote. He wrote over 3,000 Proverbs. He spoke about plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop, hyssop that grows out of the walls. He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. 
from all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. The kings would send people to sit at the feet of Solomon and listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon was deep. He could talk about plant life. He could talk about cedar trees and he could talk about the hyssop and, 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 and he could talk about uh, animals and birds and reptiles and fish. He was deep. He had wisdom. And he could also talk about mankind. So this is Solomon's resume. And, 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 and you should know whether your teacher has prepared to teach or is qualified to teach. And quite often we get short change in church because we have put people up to teach who have not prepared to teach. People who have not even taken one single class. People who haven't even bought one single book about the subject. But we have put them up to teach. So you, 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 should, you should know something about uh, the preparation or the qualification of the people you sit under. So many people will go to these little house ministries and then they'll come back and want to argue you down about the Bible. And they hadn't had any kind of preparation. Hadn't taken the first class. So we need to know something about who is trying to teach us. Who is trying to teach us. And so verse 2 says, to know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To perceive the words of understanding. This is the purpose of the book, to teach, to know wisdom and instruction, and to perceive the words of understanding. The purpose of the book is, is, is to teach. And First King gives us another, uh, another uh, outlook at Solomon. Solomon prayed. Solomon prayed. Uh, when he was coming to the throne. And Solomon understood that in order for him to be a good leader, that he needed to invite God to be his advisor. And so Solomon prays in 1 Kings 3 and 9 in King James Version. He says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Really, my brothers and sisters, that is the foundation of life, that we be able to discern, we be able to distinguish, tell the difference between what is good and what's bad, what is good for us and what is harmful to us. What brings us value? And what does not? So Solomon prays this. Give, give me an understanding heart to judge the people that I may discern between the good and the bad. For who is able to judge this thou so great a people? Solomon was a king over a great multitude of people. And the speech Solomon made pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord. He invited God into his life. He invited God into his position as king. How many of us invite God into our position? How many of us invite God to our job? How many of us invite God to go along with us as we riding down the highway? And so Solomon says, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou has asked this thing and has not asked for thyself. Solomon asked God for something for the people. He did not ask for himself long life. Neither did he ask for riches 
for himself. No, did he ask for the life of his enemies, but has asked for that self-understanding. In all you're getting, my brothers and my sisters, get an understanding. Solomon asked for understanding to discern judgment because he, he was a ruler over a multitude of people. And, and many, many cases will come before him. And so Solomon asked for understanding to discern judgment. He says, behold, I have done according to thy words. That, that's, that's, that's how we are going to be able to live successful as we live in obedience if we do according to the word of God. He says, lo, I have given thee, uh, 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 God says to Solomon, Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, and there after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So Solomon was the wisest man there was until Jesus came. The Bible says, uh, and, and one wiser than Solomon has come. So until Jesus came, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And so in verse three, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. King James Version. The purpose of the book of Proverbs is to train us how to live, how, how to live in power, powerful living. The book of Proverbs trains us how we ought to make decisions, how we ought to live everyday life. And so Job says, to receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, from the teacher's mouth. Receive the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart, in thine heart. Heart here, heart here represents mind. We need to store the word of God in our minds, in our mind. Put it to memory, put it to our remembrance, store it up in our minds. If, 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 we, if we're going to live right and we come to a situation, then we need to download the word from our mind. How, how should I deal with this situation? How should I handle this? We need to download it from our mind. Listen, knowledge is worthless, it's useless, it's valueless without application. If you don't apply what you know, it's of no good to you. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Since some of us want God to do everything, but God expects us to play a part. If you're gonna trust God, then you ought to go ahead on and do the work. You're gonna do the work, do the work. I believe that some people are still waiting on God to come give them the vaccination. Faith without works. If I ask God for protection from this virus, and I, 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 I didn't been, I didn't visit this so many times, then I would have enough faith to get the shot. Faith without works is dead. 
So receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay it up in your heart. Knowledge is worthless without application. Wisdom should be applied to everyday living. It should be applied to everyday living. Verse number four. In verse number four, to give subtility, sub, let's see, subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. This is what Proverbs is written for. To give wisdom to the simple. The word, the Hebrew word rendered simple in Proverbs denotes a person who is gullible. And, 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 and being gullible means you're easily deceived or you're easily led without moral direction and inclined to evil. Maybe of some of the folks that uh, participated in that January 6th march on the Capitol had read Proverbs, they wouldn't have gone. They, they wouldn't have gone. They, they wouldn't have been so easily deceived. They wouldn't have been so easily led without any moral direction. And they wouldn't have been inclined to do evil. The lesson is, the sooner we learn these truths, the better for us. The sooner we learn these truths, the better we be. So here's what, here's what happens. Here, here's what happens. And here's what happens in a many homes. This is why we have so much black on black crime and so much drive by shooting and all that, because this stuff happens in a whole lot of homes. We often let the world train a child until he's too old and set in his ways to respond to wisdom. I think I ought to say that again. We often let the world and, and, and how, how does the world train our children? Through the media, through television, through radio, through Facebook, through TikTok, uh, to all, all of these devices. We allow the world to train our children and, and to, until, they, 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 until they become too old and are set in their ways to respond to the wisdom of God. Ecclesiastes says this, and, and, and this is Solomon, the preacher, again. He says, remember now thy creator. We remember God in the days of your youth while the evil days come not. Boy, and the evil days are coming. Well, I remember I could run up and down the street and jumping and stay out there playing in the sun all day long and, 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 and it didn't bother me one bit. Now it's hard to even walk down the street because the evil days are come. Now, now, now the years or the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So. Remember God, get, get, get our children involved. Re remember God while you can serve. Re remember God while you can still be a value to others, not just to yourself, but be a value to others. Remember God while you're young. Re remember while you're young and strong, remember God. And so the, the, the book of Psalms says, in Psalm 19 and 7, the law of God, the word of God, is perfect, it's complete, it's complete, 
Converting the soul. You, you know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter what I do if, as long as I preach the word of God, if the word of God doesn't change a person, they're not going to be changed. If the Bible doesn't do it, it ain't going to happen. And so the law of God is complete. Converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. If you want to be a wise man or you want to be a wise woman, a wise boy, a wise girl, meditate on Proverbs. Meditate on the teachings of Proverbs because Proverbs teaches us how to live. We, we, we need to know how to live. We need to know how to face certain situations and circumstances. We, we need to know how to make a choice. And so if you're trying to live successfully, meditate on the book of Proverbs. Verses five and six says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. Now, now, don't let nobody fool you. All of the Bible is not so easily understood. There are some difficult passages in the Bible. There are some mysteries in the Bible. And God has called those that he has called stewards of the mysteries of the word. Stewards of the mysteries of the word. And so a wise man will listen and increase in learning the rewards of wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 9 says, and, and then the best way to interpret scripture is with scripture, is with scripture. So Proverbs 99 says, instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. They will add to their learning. I'm still trying to add to my learning. I, I can't stop it. I'm still trying to add to my learning. Uh, doctors and, and uh, often have to be recertified. They have to add to their learning. They have to add to their learning. Uh, New situations sometimes call for new teaching. You have to add to your learning. Even the richest stores will close if they don't add to their stock. I've been in Walmart a few weeks ago and, 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 and the shelves were looking empty. And a couple of days later, the shelves were filled back up. We need to add to our learning because the know-it-all will not hear instructions. People who know it all, no, 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 they don't want to hear no instructions. They don't want to hear nothing about going to no class. They don't want to hear nothing about no teaching. To grow in knowledge you must recognize 
that you don't know it all. You must recognize that you don't, you don't know it all. Solomon was the wisest man in the world at his time, but he didn't know it all. The Bible says one wiser than Solomon came on the scene. No, he didn't know it all. So we have to recognize we don't know it all. Here's what the writer of Hebrews says. He says, in fact, though by the time you ought to be teachers, you've been around so long. You, you've been here a long time. And you ought to be teachers. But listen, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's word all over again. You, you've been around here all this time. And you have not applied yourself to, to learning. And, and, and now, you need someone to teach you the elementary thing, the beginning, the elementary stuff of God's word all over again. He said, you need milk, not, not solid food. You, 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 you can't eat solid food. You, you can't eat a parable. You, you can't eat a, a, a piece of scripture uh, that is difficult to understand uh, because it'll give you indigestion. You, you need milk. And anyone who lives on milk is being still an infant, an infant, an infant. And you're saying this to the church. Being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food, solid food, the entree, solid food, is for the mature who by constant, listen, constant, continuous, by constant use, of the word of God have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. When, 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 you, when you open the book constantly, when you set aside a period in, in your 24 hour day to read, if it's just a verse, because you've been constantly living on the word of God, your diet has been the word of God. You train yourself. Yourself, you're trained by the word of God to distinguish between what's good and what's evil. Listen, some of the greatest were taught by others their peers. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, instructed him. The Lord instructed his disciples. Peter enlightened his fellow apostles. And if you if you've been if you've been constantly reading the word, then you know Priscilla and Aquila instructed Apollos. Apollos, who 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 was a strong or 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 orator, he was strong uh, uh, orator, uh, somebody who could preach. Make people stand on their feet. He, he was eloquent of speech. Uh, Apollos was deep, but Apollos' doctrine was wrong. And so Priscilla and Aquila, a husband and a wife, who had been instructed in the word of God, called them aside 
and they taught him the word of God more perfectly, more completely, more completely. They taught him. So down through the years, people who were great were taught by others. And how many disorders and false teachings might have been spared to the church if the church would value the minister of God as an interpreter with a position divinely appointed. Divinely appointed. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that, that preachers who have been called are the only teachers because the Bible says some folks are gifted to teach. Some folks are gifted to teach. And if you know that that is a gift, or have you developed it? Have you developed it? Have you took any kind of training? Have you been to any class? Ha have you developed your gift to teach? And so Solomon starts out in this lesson teaching us the value of wisdom. And wisdom comes from listening. You, you'll be surprised how much you can learn listening. It says, Proverbs are a group of short statements that has been made by facts that are true by observation and experience. Observation and experience. And so Proverbs has a lot to say to us. It has a many areas that are needed for everyday living. It shares with us how to live a better life. And so as we go forward, we're going to have to continue to pray and ask God to open our understanding. And we're going to have to remember that value, uh, that knowledge has no value unless it is applied. It does you no good. It does me no good sit under some good solid teaching and hear the word and don't do the word. It, it's, it, it's, it, 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 it's of no value to be hearers only and not doers of the word. So we have to learn to apply what we have been taught what we hear that is true. Solomon says a wise man will become wiser by increasing his learning. Don't live where nobody can tell you nothing. A whole lot of folks have that spirit. I've been there and done that spirit. And since you've been there and done that, then nobody could tell you nothing. But there's some things that are happening since you've been out there 
there's some things that are happening now that wasn't happening when you were there. So young people in the church can tell us a whole lot of things that we don't know if we listen and increase in learning, increase in wisdom. God bless you. We'll, we'll pick up on next week the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. Somebody. Somebody, somebody share with us. How, how do you feel about sharing with somebody else when they're going in the wrong direction? And, and, and how do you base your reasoning that somebody's going in the wrong direction. What, well, this, this, what's the best teacher? The word of God. That's all you're gonna say? Well, the best teacher is Jesus, but his word. He is the word, living okay. word. Okay. Well, uh, uh, what, what, personally, 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 you didn't always read your Bible. You didn't always know Jesus. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that you were wrong about the word of God is the best teacher because we're saying if we want to live successful, <laughs> Proverbs is a good book to meditate on. But but how did you learn? Most of us learn through self experience. Through experience, experience. It is said that experience is the best, the best teacher. 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 Experience is the best, the best teacher. teacher. What what does experience teach? Uh, oh. Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, not not just experience, but also observation. If you if you see something that you want to do and somebody else is doing it, uh, something that they're doing that you don't want to do, then you can see what the outcomes are going to be either way. And that's from observation. Amen. So Solomon Solomon talks about experience and and observation. Why do you think so many people? Well, we just take we we just take uh, the virus for for instance. Why do you think so many people are contacting the virus? Because they're not listening and they're not doing what what they asked to do. Well, I mean, experience and observation comes up. Uh, a whole lot of folks have experienced that sickness in their family somewhere down the line. And a whole lot of folks have observed their neighbors and their coworkers getting sick. Some people believe it more when it happens to them. Okay, they, 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 that's that's that that's experience comes okay. in again. Right. Some people. Which, 
which would you prefer? Which is safest? Which, which one of those teachings you think would be safest? Observation. Uh, <laughs> I, <agree>. <laughs> <laughs> I go with observation. I, I, don't agree. To, I don't have to experience <laughs> <I agree>. everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. If, if I see, you know, and, I, and, and I, this, this used to bug me a lot when I was in the street because I had some real good buddies, man. And, and we, 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 we were able to observe what was happening to our other buddies who would get strung out on, on, on drugs or something that, and we, we would see them just probably just be dismantled. They lose their job, they lose their home, they lose their family. And we saw that. And then some of us who saw it, <laughs> went and got, got hooked. They ain't thinking what happened to them, <laughs> even after they saw it. And, 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 and you know what? When, uh, thank you for that, Sister Jackie, because that, that tells me what the Bible says, too. The Bible says they have eyes, <laughs> but they cannot see. They cannot see. Mm -hmm. they, they cannot see. They got eyes, but they cannot see. But observation is the safest method. Yeah. If, if I see it, why do you think it won't? I mean, how could I think that it won't happen to me if it happened to somebody just like me? Yeah, that's right. But it, but it, but it's happening. No, Pastor. people walking around every day thinking they're exempt. It can't happen to them. Pastor, uh, up there on uh, Montgomery Street, down from uh, St. Luke, we out there witnessed in the, in the park. And I would talk to this guy, you know, he looked like, like a drunk. And I, I told him that I used to drink, I used to be an alcoholic. Then I told him how, how God changed me. I said, I'm not no better than you. The only difference between me and you, I have God in my life and you don't. But you know, you know, you know a guy start crying? I, 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 could feel, I could feel his pain. He, he, start, he start crying. I said, and, and I ain't stayed in being down. I, I said, look, uh, look for God, my man. You'll be all right. And, and I felt that, and this about, oh, this was over 16 years ago. I feel, I'm, I feel like the day that the guy is saved, that's in my spirit, that he was saved. Because the word that I shared with him, he, he started crying. He started crying, Pastor. You know, and, and, and that's what we have to do, uh, share our experience. With, with people like that, especially if, if you've been with it, especially if you've been, I, I can talk to alcoholics. I can't talk to drug addicts. I can tell them some things, but I mostly tell, talk with alcoholics because I've been there and done that. Only God, because God's grace, that, that's why I'm here today. And, I, and I'm not ashamed to tell people I'm an alcoholic. You know, and, and the spirit, Need me to tell people I'm alcoholic in certain situations. A lot of times you might not hear me talk about it, but sometimes the spirit, especially I'm talking about alcohol and stuff like that. I, I can speak to I can speak to them. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are two two uh two verbs that we can't get around. We we all was or we all were something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's we, we, right. We, we can't get around it. We all were, oh. or we was something. Oh, it, you know? That's right. And sometimes God lets us lay out there, and and, and lets us lets us lay out there and, and play in our misery. Uh, so when He saves us, that we can identify, just like you said, that we can identify with others who are going through, who are going through. And, and the first step towards salvation is a broken spirit. 
And so when that, that guy, if he broke down and cried, it meant that he didn't want, he didn't want to. And, and whatever it was that he was using had a stronghold on it. And he didn't, he didn't want to be out there. That's but, the but whole he, question. He, he couldn't break the stronghold. And Good you evening. can't do it by yourself. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I have a question. So um, Dickie Baker said um, that the only difference between he and the guy that he was witnessing to is that he had God and, and that guy didn't. So if you're an alcoholic or crack addict or whatever, does that mean you don't have God? Because um, some people could just be experiencing something at that moment that's causing them to, you know, do whatever it is that they're doing. So does that mean alcoholics don't have God? Because because that's that's real. Being an alcoholic is is it's a disease. So it's just like having cancer and, and any other thing. You know, it's actually a diagnosis. So I'm just wondering, you know, if that's safe to say, if you're alcoholic, then that means you don't have God. Well, well, alcoholic would be a little different from cancer or whatever because. You don't choose cancer usually. Cancer might choose you, but you choose you, you choose to be an alcoholic. And if not you all just, the time, though. Not necessarily. It could be it, but there are some situations, you know, that some some people are in situations that that cause them to to turn to because that's all they know that that's how you cope or whatever. But sometimes people, you know, get into things or situations that cause them to do X, Y, Z. So that's why I'm just wondering. So in that case, is it safe to say that they don't have God? Can I answer well, that? It's Huh? Please. <laughs> because okay, we, I was a drug uh, addict at one time. I know that I. We lost your mic. Yeah, we, we lost her again. Uh, I think Sister Walker is saying that they are both diseases. I mean, you, they, they happen or you can... I'm back but um what I was <laughs> well wait if you back I... wait you got cut off so wait <laughs> yeah um they they alcohol alcoholism is a disease it is described as a disease too they they happen differently um but they they both, they are are disease. both diseases any kind of um drug habit um, it's a disease, just like, just like one that causes sickness in your body. You know, so I think that's what, um, well, is, is it contagious? <laughs> all diseases no. are contagious. <laughs> well, no, no it's, it's self-inflicted. Self I, I drank too. And I, I drank a lot when I was out there, but, but. I did it by choice. Yes, choice. Yeah, but you were stronger too. You no, know, no but but yet still, I choose to do it. I could have gotten hooked up just like they did. Choice. Yeah, but, but I think it was the something point that is I chose those diseases. You know, no, it, it wasn't a disease. I choose to do that. I choose to put that in my body. But Pastor, we choose to do a whole lot of things. Alcohol. A lot of us, a lot of us do things um that's sinful, but that doesn't mean that we don't have God. I, I might not be uh -huh. alcoholic, but that doesn't mean that I do everything that's right every day, all day long. So well, now, I don't, my I don't... question is is if somebody is an alcoholic, does that mean that they don't have God? I just want to understand that. I can't I can't agree with that. I cannot agree with that because when it says in the word of God that all of us have fallen short of his glory, there yeah. have been many people that have been saved. They have gone through trauma in their life. They have gone back out into the world of whatever sin they might have encountered, prostitution, drug addiction, all of these things that they might have brought you know, that they might have been saved from when they came to know God, but things happen in people's lives. Just like Leslie said, things happen in people's lives. When they go back out into the world, they still have God. God, they well, left God. God didn't leave them. So that means that 
They can come. They they are not without God. He well, said, I mean, that's me. Well, I don't well hold him. on, hold on. We all have God in that situation. We all yeah. have God. But then the Bible says, any man that be in Christ Ooh, is creature. a new creature. creature. Uh, we was new that, creature. That. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you don't have God, but you. It's hard to be saved and be an alcoholic. Right. It's hard to be saved and be an alcoholic. Now, because you trusting in alcohol more than you trusting in God. Absolutely, You know, Pastor. and can I also say this? The Bible says that God don't dwell in no unclean place. So I knew oh, I was in an unclean place and he was not with me. I would pray to him even while I was on addicted on drugs. But I knew he was not with me until I made up my mind that I was going to leave the world behind and come to him. Yeah, and, I, and I'm saying, yeah, people go through stuff. Yeah, you, you, you might lose a relative, you might lose a loved one, and it might cause you to hit the bottle. But it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't call you to become bottle dependent. Some know, people are a weak. good man. The Bible says a good man fall seven times, but he get back seven up. Amen. 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 That's the key. So you don't stay in it, you know. And I, I'm, you know, I like I said, I've been out there too. I, I, and I, I drunk more than my share. I didn't drink enough for somebody else, you know. But, but I didn't get. I didn't I didn't stay in it because the only way you're gonna get out of whatever you're in is you want to. Yeah, you have to have willpower. Um it, it takes strength and willpower. You know, it takes God too. But a lot of people are just weak and they 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 end up um becoming addicted to certain things and 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 they do need help. Um I think that's why it's described as a sickness with, with some people because they just don't have that willpower. They're, they are weak and they just don't have enough willpower to, to just let it go. I mean, some people recover from it, but there are many who, who don't. Yeah. Well, first of all, you got to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior once you receive him, you will change. You may have done those things, but once you receive God, he'll give you that power. It's just like my husband said, he doesn't desire that anymore. God will remove that from you. And we're speaking from experience. I didn't drink, but I gambled. The Lord's money, I didn't know it was his. I thought it was mine. But once I got saved, I changed. I don't do those things that I mean. And so it's not, it's, you got to pray and ask God for willpower. Like Pastor said, people who drink, they drink because they want to drink. They use that as an excuse. But there's no excuse for you to have a habit like that and not want to get out of it. People see, and even though they see drug addicts, they see what happened to them. You know, we see all of this. You still got people that are still doing it. Same a lot of them. A lot of them. You got to pray and ask God for power. He gives us free will. We got free choices. We can do whatever we want to do. And we have to want to not do these things. That's what I say. God will. Bless us to not do it. But once you receive him, you change. Like I said, you become a new creature. If you, receive, if you actually receive him, it's no way you can stay the same. Well, some that, some, yeah. people, some people some people you can't fall and, and get back up again. You're saying some people that have been delivered. Some people, some people have them. been delivered. Some people have been delivered from right. alcoholism. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, many people yeah. have. Man, yeah. Yeah. But the the key to all of that is it doesn't matter how much you want me to. I got you. To have to want it yourself. That's right. That's you right. Have to want it yourself. Amen. Okay, I got to go to, and I can speak from experience. That's the key. I, I can speak from experience, and my experience is that there was I, I, there was nothing I'd rather do than smoke a joint. There's nothing I'd rather do than smoke a joint. Had a good job and everything, still was smoking joints. Go to work, smoke joints on the job. But it came to a point 
came to a point where yeah. I determined in me yeah. that 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 I couldn't get off joints on my own. And I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit. And I, I tell you why I wanted to quit, because I was out there in the streets setting up people at the club, setting up the bar and all that, and came home one night and my wife told me, she said, uh, one of my boys had a hole in the bottom of his tennis. Hmm. And I and I I had just got through setting up the bar. Mm -hmm. And it had no money. Mm -hmm. Had no money. And wow. I thought about that. I said, you know what? I'm out here setting up grown men. Right. And here my little son's school age, he can't work. And he got he walking around with a hole in his shoe. And from that night that night on, I decided that that wasn't the life I wanted to live. And I and I had I had some joints in my pocket that night <laughs> on my way to work. And you know what? I took them joints and put them in a trash can and went yeah, on to work. Yeah, I was working the, I worked in the midnight shift. I put them in a the trash can and went on to work. And when I got to work, if I had them, I would have smoked them. Right. But when I got off that morning, when I got off that next morning and came home, the trash man had done come. <laughs> and dumped the trash. <laughs> Came and dumped the trash. I went in the house and got in the bed and went to sleep. And that's the last time I got on my knees and I asked God to deliver me. Yeah. Deliver me from this. And, and that was the last time I, I smoked a joint, drank any kind of liquor or anything else. Mm -hmm. You know. You have to get to a point in your life right. where you're sick of being who you are. Mm -hmm. I was sick of smoking yeah. cigarettes. So I, I, I went through that myself. I was delivered from smoking cigarettes. You know, I mean, it, it's, you, you, have to, you have to want to do it because it's not easy. Any, any habit is hard to break. Anything. So you you have to you really have to want to do it, and if you want to do it, then you know you can't do it on your own. You you have to turn to God. Even food addictions, any any wow. addiction, any that could be an addiction. Amen. I wow. mean, you also have to to know that God will hear and answer your prayer, even if you are addicted to something. You got to believe oh, yeah. within yourself that God hear me. Because if I talk to God when I was out there, I said, God, I can't do this by myself. I need you to help me, Lord, That's to right. come away from this right. and stay away from this. Right. And God heard me. I know he heard me. Oh, I he knew it today. Yeah, we heard you. Yes, he heard me. Yeah, we heard you. Uh, I know you. hear and answer your prayer. No, but the last, the last lesson, the last Amen. lesson we just Amen. finished, Say it, it talked about, it talked about anything that yeah. you put before God. We talking about food addiction and all these kind of anything. addictions. Anything, yes. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anything you yes. put before God, Man, is yes. Bad stuff. yes. Anything you put before God is an idol. Amen. Yes, yes. Pastor. Yes. Let's listen to the clay. We. We just, as you said, we just studied in First John. It is the fourth, the third chapter, and the ninth verse. It says, "Whoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God." Which means he has God's, he has the divine nature. You will not continue sinning if you are in God, if you are in Christ. However, this is why we have the church. We have one another to help one another do these things. But a lot of times people don't want to tell, but we should make it, uh, make it so that we're open to help one another and not Amen. talk about one another. Amen. 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 As I had a guy at Reverend Robert's church who testified, he testified by he was a drug addict. You know, he was an alcoholic. So I I did I talked to the guy and gave him my number. I said, man, you can call me anytime you want to. 
Don't you know about a week later, the guy called me about three o'clock in the morning. And, and, and I, I, I mostly talk to him. You know, you when people like that, they, it's, it's certain things they just want to get off their chest. So I, uh, I listened to him. I maybe about almost an hour or something like that. You know, then we got spent. I think about two weeks later, he called me and said, "Thank you, man." He said that was the lowest point in my life. I, I was at the lowest point in my life. And, and that's why we got to be available for people like that. Let, let them know if you dare to help them. Well, you, you know, we, we talk about I got a testimony. Well, you can't have a testimony until you Without pass a, a test. test. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So a test comes before a testimony. Yeah. Well, I want to make one comment about observation, though. Um, pass all. I never. I saw guys who were smoking those joints. I never wanted to do that. Amen. That was my thing. Amen. I saw where they was going to or where they'd been to. And um, standing over the vending machine, trying to buy as much sweets as they can. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Or whatever laying in the corner. Not me. That was not Amen. me. <laughs> you know, as light as people take it, your environment will shape you if you allow it. Yeah, you gotta you be strong. You your environment will shape you if you allow. No, but I'm strong saying and anybody, anybody can still be saved that's alive. Anybody that's still Amen. alive can be still saved. Hope. Yeah. Amen. It's always I hope. don't care what you own, what you're doing. When there's life, there's hope. If yeah. you're alive, you can be saved. Amen. If you turn to God and ask God to save you, you can be saved. Amen. But you, but you got to want it. You. You got to want it more than what, you, what you're what doing. You got to want it more than what you're doing. We just got through talking about, what Sister Clay was talking about, we just got through talking about in First John, anything that we put before God is an idol. Yes. And any idol is a sin. It, it's a good it, it's a good discussion tonight very very good discussion we we Amen. need to we need to we need to get into the word and discuss the word and and get an understanding that's what that's what solomon is talking about tonight get an yeah. understanding get an understanding and he says the beginning we, we'll do that next week but the beginning of <laughs> wisdom is to fear god Amen. Fear god. Yeah. Not to be afraid of God. No. Jesus. Mm -mm. But to, to reveal God. To reveal God. Mm. We are wild time. Do we have any, any any other any other comments or questions? Yes, Pastor. Yes. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is knowing something. Wisdom is knowing how or when to apply it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wisdom yeah. is knowing how to Amen. apply knowledge. Amen. Amen. Everybody don't know how when to apply how. Yeah. So wisdom comes from knowing how or when to apply what you know. Amen. See, like, like tonight. A whole lot of these testimonies wouldn't have just come out <laughs> in the ordinary. Right. Wouldn't have come out in the ordinary. There, there's a time and a place. Yes. Amen. You know, so so wisdom comes in knowing when and how to apply what you know. Any other? I talk to Sue when I got home. Praise the Lord. You, 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 all, you all got wisdom. Amen. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody online got some wisdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we off to a good start. First uh first week that God has given us in the in another Amen. year. I mean, we like Thank to say you, Lord. We like to say a new year, but but the years just keep on coming. Mm, they, yeah. they, they ain't yeah. new to God. They, they, they keep on coming. They, they, they go, they're not going to stop. 
they just keep on coming until time be no more. So mm -hmm. year after year, we're gonna we years gonna we're gonna have a sequel every year. So God has given us another chance to be numbered among those in the new year. But let us pray. And let us let us pray much for those that are weaker than we are. Let us pray much for, and I know all of us got somebody in our family that needs our prayer. Yes. We may not Amen. be the strongest person in the world, but at least we're stronger than they are. Yes. And so we have to keep on praying and keep on living something before. Them. Keep on living something before them because when you don't live what you talk about, then to them, you have lost your witness. Yes. You know, you, you lost your witness. So you can't tell me very much about drinking if you're drinking too. <laughs> you know, you, 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 we, got, we got to live so that we don't lose our witness. You can't tell me to put the, put the joint down if you're smoking too. That's right. You know, so, so we got to keep our witness. And, and pray for one another. Lift one another up. Mm. Pray for one another. Because prayer works. Yes, it prayer does. Prayer is one, yes, one, of the, one of the major resources that God has given us. That God has given us. You know, and, and, and some people are simply better by choice than we are by practice. Some people are just better by choice than we are by practice. You know, and I, I listen that listen that Curly testimony just now that he saw it and he through observation and he didn't do it. See, he he was better by choice, by choice. See, because I saw what was going on too, and I wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I saw the good side of it. I saw him laughing and partying. <laughs> I saw the, I saw the, I saw what I thought was the good side of it, boy, because it was laughing and having a bang, man. The music was blowing, the music was 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 turned up sky high, and, and the smoke was floating, and everybody was just, just jamming. Yes, sir. So, yeah, yeah. And I got in something that was hard to get out. It's easy to get in stuff, but it's hard to get out. You have to have a life-changing experience, just like the Amen. prodigal son. Amen. Like the prodigal son. Yeah. He got all his money and left home. Yeah. But when he got broke, he went back. He went back where he where he knew he had a blessing. He went back where he knew his blessings came from. Mm -hmm. so. Amen. You got to get out of something and get in something you never want to get out. <laughs> Okay, preacher. I hear you. I hear you. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Good Praise lesson, Lord. Pastor. Brandon, lead yeah. us in prayer. Amen. Lead us in prayer as we as we as we shut down. Heavenly Father, we come before you first and foremost just to give you glory, honor, and praise. God, mm -hmm. we thank you for life, health, and strength, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you've brought us this far. God, we thank you most of all for this Bible study and for the ability to be able to come together and to study your word. Because you told us in your word, Father God, to study to show ourselves approved. So God, as we continue to study, oh God, allow us to grow more in you. Allow us to grow with a better understanding of what it is that your word will have for us. Because your word is our guiding light. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto uh, yes. our feet, God. Yes, and for that, God, we just tell you, thank you for your thank word. You, thank, thank you, so much. Our pastor on tonight, oh God. And we just ask that you continue to shower down blessings upon yes. him and upon his household, oh God. Yes. Bless him, oh God. Open up the windows of heaven and pour yes. out blessings that he will not yes. have room enough to receive. We yes. ask right now, Father God, God, that you just bless second honor as a whole God. Yes, Lord. God. Glory. We thank you, Father God, for keeping the doors open. We yes. thank you, Father God, for yes. keeping things moving. And we ask, Lord God, that you allow us to be steadfast, unmovable, yes. always yes. abounding in your work, for our yes. labor shall not be in vain. Yes, These are many blessings we ask in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 God bless. Everybody all right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah.
All right. Well, good, good, good. Amen. God bless and uh, be safe, be careful, and be smart. Just keep being safe, be careful, be smart. Let us pray for one another and let us uh pray for pray for our churches and uh pray for our loved ones as well as our neighbors and even lift up a prayer for our enemies. Yeah, amen. 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 God bless amen. you, God keep you. Uh, enjoyed you guys.